session now. Uh, we'll start with the Pariche and then the Ekalgit. Pariche will be taken by Srimati Niraji. She is the Kenya Gruhini Pramukh. Um, over to Niraji. Namaste to all. Okay. I have been given the task of giving Parichai of Divyashti Parmar. Um, Divyashti was born in Bharat and started Shaka as a Shishu. He did his preliminary education in Mombasa and then went on to do further studies at the University of Brighton in UK. He has done bachelor's and master's in electric, electrical and communication engineering and is currently involved in their family business of steel engineering services. Um, Sri Diveshti has passed through various daitvas in Sang and is currently a Kenya Karyavaha, a role which he is very ably playing. Diveshti is married to Srimati Nitalji and they have three children. Diveshti is very inspiring to all, us all and I'm sure we're all eager to hear from him today. Thank you. Ekal Git by Rahul Ji, go ahead. Namaste, Sabiko. Ekal Git Hoga. Karya Kareta Bhavana Hai. कार्य करता साधना कार्य करता तो स्वयं हे पुष्प बन भाव अर्चना मात्र भूकी वंदना कर मात्र भूकी वंदना ढेय अपना है सुनिश्चित धारना ध्रुव तार काशी पूर्वजों के वीर व्रत की प्रेरणा नित पूर्णिमासी धर्म के आधार पर ही कर विजय की योजना मात्र भूकी वंदना कर मात्र भूकी वंदना संग भूमि उर्वरा है बोधिया निज को धरा में पेल थी शाखा प्रशाखा उभर आया तरु गगन में फूल फल से विनत तरु के शक्ति की नव सर्जना मात्र भूकी वंदना कर मात्र भूकी वंदना मैं नहीं तुम ही निरंतर मंत्र जपता कार्य करता कंठको से पूर्ण पथ पर सहज चलता कार्य करता कार्य करता जानता है हर हृदय संवेदना मात्र भूकी वंदना कर मात्र भूकी वंदना कार्य करता भावना है कार्य करता साधना कार्य करता तो स्वयं हे पुष्प बन भाव अर्चना मात्र भूकी वंदना कर मात्र भूकी वंदना
नमस्ते सभी को केन्या के संचालक माननीय परेश जी जय शाह केन्या के कार्यवाही का श्रीमती जानकी जी अगस्त्य राजू केन्या के सह कार्यवाह श्री कमल जी शर्मा अधिकारी गण अन्य देशों से पधारे हुए कार्यकर्ताओं सेविकाय भगिनी और प्रिय स्वयंसेवक बंधु नमस्ते दिस इज अ कंटिन्यूएशन ऑफ सीरीज ऑफ टॉक्स ऑन द बुक कार्यकर्ता बाय श्री दत्तोपन जी थेंगड़े एंड दिस इज सेशन सेशन टेन Last week, we ended where Sri Piyush ji ended the talk with Mrityu hi Vishranti. First of all, before I begin, I would like to pray to Paramatma that you all are well, your health is well, and in this COVID era, you are all doing okay and hanging on. This period. has presented us new normals it has been tough on many but there is a particular group who has i think suffered the most and that i think is the groinies the young ladies or the young mothers most of all who are not working for them the workload has truly increased while making sure that the kids also get online classes and make sure they are there in the homes cooking food and looking after everyone it has been tough on, on them and one reason i believe it is because some of the social aspects what they normally do cannot be done now for example as we know these gruhinis of today a lot of them go to something that is known as kitty parties yes you heard me right kitty parties it is where young ladies and sometimes even old ones get together during the working hours in their free time enjoy have food play games but as we all know most important most importantly talk or chat or gossip and which is the best topic to gossip about yes you got it right sas and bahu i can visualize many of you are smiling now which is good for the ladies this is a very important topic and if you hear what they talk about in these parties you will be amazed to to learn so many different stories and on these stories i think a few serials in bharat are running they would say that my sas is like this she still dresses up she still does this she is not giving me this and so on and so forth but the irony is that when a mother when a young lady becomes a mother and she has a son what is it that she thinks about or visualizes you got it right she visualizes that my son will grow older and bring a good bahu in the house and once i get that bahu what will i do yes i will hand over the keys so that i will become free and may the bahu lead the house but does it really happen in life 
it is quite ironic that such things don't happen in the last session we ended with one should be active till death mrityu hi vishranti no bed rest there is no time to rest it means that we should be working throughout can you imagine if you are put to bed and you are ill and your family has to look after you would one like it no so that is what is known as being active till death make sure you carry on working as karya kartas we have to make sure we carry on working but it doesn't mean that we carry on being in the decision making team at present for example you may be a karyava but is it so that you carry on being the karyava throughout till death for so many years what we saw in the previous slide that the sas gives the keys to the bahu and we know in our business field is known as exit strategy very jokingly on makar sankranti utsav when our daitva is given we are told you know amongst your first task is to find your replacement that is known as exit strategy one should be active till death but one need not be in the decision making team one should learn to hand over how old it be in the house if a bahu has come and the sas still carries on doing all the chores she still keeps everything to herself how old it be in our businesses if of our fathers carry on doing everything and don't hand over it to their children it is a natural process of handing over and when one hands over the decision making role is what is to be handed over it is better to be active but not in the decision making role because as we grow older we have limitations in our physical aspect and those limitations can also bear or impair our decision making process and thus it is better to have young shoulders carry the the march ahead so as a karyakarta one should be active till death but there has to be a precaution that you should not be in the decision making team as soon as you hand over the better our role as karyakartas and as we grow older should be that of a grandfather or a grandmother what is their role their role is to make everyone happy they would sit there not do anything actively but are there as someone when they need help if a young child wants a sweet maybe the mother may say no but when he or she goes to the grandmother or the grandfather they would give it to them as we hand over decision making we should become like the grandfather the grandmother and become relieved from all the day to day hustles but are there when need be sometimes we cannot hand over these things and why it is because we feel that i can do it better or i will do it faster once a 
Arjun was walking with Bhagwan Krishna. And Krishna said, Everyone says, Danvir Karan. That means one who is very generous. But I am also generous, Krishna. And Krishna mischievously smiles and says, Of course you are, Parth. Come, let us go to this village. There is a big mountain and beside it is a small village of a few hundred families. And Krishna, with waving his hand, makes the mountain full of gold and tells Arjun, this mountain of gold, I want you to go and distribute it to the villagers. So Arjun says, yes, I can do that. And he goes, he calls all the villagers, brings them in one line closer to the mountain and gives each one a bag, takes up an axe or a pickle and starts digging the mountain and calls one family by one and gives them certain quantity of gold. From morning till evening, in the hot sun, Arjun toiled. He worked very hard, but still the mountain was not over. One by one, the families came. They came for a second round. They came for a third round, but the mountain of gold was still there. He comes to Krishna and says, I am tired now, Krishna says, you have done well. And Krishna again waves his hand and the mountain becomes full and brings Karna and tells Karna, here is a mountain of gold. I would like you to distribute it to the villagers. And the same thing he does, Karna goes, calls all the villagers, but he says only two, three sentences. He says, by Krishna's grace, we have got this mountain of gold. And this mountain of gold is yours, oh, all the, is yours for all the villagers. Please go and take as much as you want. And he leaves. Arjun is speechless. And Krishna tells him, you see, he did not do it. He let the villagers do. He did not feel it is his, whereas you felt it was yours. We also see such similar incidences in our homes, in our shakhas, and everywhere in the society. Whenever someone from outside, what we call as videshi, comes, there are a few who become very active, is it not? Out of the blue, they will run up and down and make sure everything is served. But is that right? Many wake up to do work only when someone is there. But otherwise, they will lie around. This is the term that is known as good people can also get ego. At every circumstances, as a karyakarta, teamwork is most important. Let us give others a chance. Let us, though we may feel that we may do it better, let us always give chance to others to do it. Let the I never be capital in our life. When the Sas and Bahu are together, and when a guest comes to the house and the guest eats the food and he asks, who has cooked this? The sas, if she says, I have cooked, it is wrong. She should give a chance to the bahu to cook. And even if it is not right, but slowly she will learn and do it right. Give others a chance. A good cook is one who lets others come ahead. The Tobanji has written this book in a very classical way. And when you go through the book, 
you understand that why it has not yet been written in english and it is still in hindi it is very difficult to translate it in hindi with his literature and grammar and the words he has used sometimes even google cannot get the right meaning of those words because there are there aren't any in the english grammar his examples are also very wide ranged his examples range from the first world war the, the persian war jesus muhammad greek philosophers russian philosophers you name it he has put examples and thus you will forgive me as i give examples related to the kenyan swamsevaks and sevikas because the examples in the book some of them will be difficult to comprehend and to understand when datto panji became a pracharak he writes in the book he thought that i will carry on this work for a few years and then i shall go back to home do some work here and there and go back he was very clever very learned and he has written a lot of his examples the ones that one will feel ashamed of so he was sent to kerala to start shaka and when he comes back or when another pracharak visits him there is one thing he complains about and he says do you know here in this village in this town i gather people together i chose who will be the sangh chalak i chose who will be the karyama i chose who will be the mukesh i trained all of them they did not know anything about sangh and when it comes to the shaka i am not the pranam adhikari i mean i have to take pranam from people who who are also whom i have trained it this philosophy of sang doesn't get in my mind and in those beginning years he was very confused and slowly slowly being in touch with so many great pracharaks and understanding the sang philosophy he understood that the pracharak is not pranam adhikari <coughs> this covid 19 era has created a lot of us men husbands brothers fathers to be great cooks i tell you there are so many who have learned how to cook in fact some of us now even realize that we have spent so much money in buying utensils and now we figure out which utensil is where i know some of you have started to cook and i am i really appreciate it that you are learning and you are going forward if in 2021 in whichever country the master chef comes i am sure a lot of us men will be ready to go and participate in it as we prepare food we know the cooking gas is burnt or in some places charcoal or dry wood is used to burn but when we taste the food what do we say of oh, the food is very nice the spices are very nice the food is cooked well the food everything is good do we ever appreciate the lpg cylinder the cooking gas is a very good example of being totally unegoistic no ego at all the gas burns itself out to cook the food but still no pride in the first few years of being a pracharak the topanji felt that we are pracharaks why should we do menial work like carrying bags of other people and stuff so it so happened that at one of the shibirs some guests were going to come and 
श्री गुरुजी वॉज द सर संचालक एट दैट टाइम टोल दत्तोपन जी एंड न्यू प्रचारक दैट गेस्ट आर कमिंग गो इन द किचन एंड प्रिपेयर सम टी फॉर देम now both of them are pracharaks none of them know how to even start the chula in those days there was no switch to start the gas you had to light the chula you had to blow hard and then the fire will lit first of all how to start the chula the topanji did not know forget about the tea he did not know how tea is made and they were really worried after 10 minutes of sweating suddenly they hear a big laughter and turn around to see shri guru ji is there and guru ji said i knew it you will not know anything that is why i gave you this task I said don't worry i will show you and guru ji lit the chula and showed them very nicely like how a mother teaches their child how much water to put how much sugar tea leaves and milk and made tea and the topanji says this sar sanchalak is fully dedicated and also does all this work and we are here very new pracharaks fearing proud when the first ban on sang happened and after those years the constitution of the rss was done and at that time dratopanji was in for more shocks when he went through the constitution he saw that swayam sevaks choose a pratinidhi where they vote and the pratinidhi votes to choose the ceo that is the karyawa there is no election of the sanchalak but for the karyawa there is the election and he says the karyawa is the ceo of sang is written in the constitution the sanchalak is only a guide and a philosopher but we do pranam to the sanchalak and not the karyawa so it was very ironic for him to understand this philosophy at that time we say or we can create an analogy that the karyawa is like the mother who runs the house and the sanchalak is like the grandmother who sits there who looks after the children whom when you need any advice she will give and she is a very good friend the mother is the one who runs the show similarly the karyawa of any level runs the show whether it is the shaka the nagar the desh the vibhag whatever and this really amazed him the topanj when he was attending one of the shibirs in one of the bodhiks it was very nicely explained that the body has got hands has got feet has got eyes nose mouth ears all that the outwardly shape shows all this can be seen by everyone and without one the body may function not perfectly of course but without one hand one can still live without the leg can still live but without the heart the heart is tiny but the heart doesn't stop to work continuously the heart works without any face it works and in that lecture where pracharaks were there the bodhik vakta said that the sang pracharak should be like the heart it is similar case for us let us be like the heart who work continuously but not being seen some of us have done chemistry and understand the word catalyst let us become the catalyst a catalyst is something that speeds up the reaction it is not part of the reaction similarly as karyakartas 
we should try and slowly get others to be part of the reaction and let us become the catalyst. The pracharak similarly is a catalyst. It aids, it helps, but it is not part of the equation. We have dealt with three topics of precaution and we go into a few topics of leadership qualities. We all know that Bhagwan Krishna looked after the Pandavas. He was their guide, he was their philosopher, he was their everything. And we know without him, they would not have moved an inch. One who made sure that Yudhishthir becomes the Raja, the Chakravati Raja. One who guided the Chakravati Raja. He was so great. When Yudhishthir performs the Raj Surya Yagna, a Yagna done by something known as the King of Kings, everyone, I mean, there are so many guests going to come at the Yagna. And everyone chooses a task to do because there is so much work. You have so many kings from all different parts of the nation coming from all different kingdoms. So there will be a lot of work. So everyone chooses a task to do. And when Krishna is approached, he says, I shall choose the task of picking up the plates. Of picking up the used plates, banana leaves, after everyone has eaten, someone has to clean the dining table or clean the kitchen. So Krishna chose a menial task of picking up these plates. That is known as an humble leader. Some of us know Lokmanya Tilak, who was the Congress Neta in the early 1900s and in one of the Congress meetings a lot of Karyakartas had come from different places and their discussions and deliberations went on in the night till late and everyone went to sleep late but in the morning of course, as we slept late, to wake up is also difficult, so they woke up late. But when they woke up, they see a sight which amazed them. They see Lokmanya Tilak is in the kitchen preparing hot water for Karyakartas. And one of the local Karyakartas runs to him and asks, what are you doing? He says, you know, we have people who have come here from places that is hot, from places that are warm. They are not used to this cold, so they will need hot water to bath or to wash their face. The leader who was an overall leader of Congress was preparing hot water for Karakartas. There are so many examples of Parampunya Doktaji as well, but one that stands out and we all know about it is when the first Shaka was being started at Mohityavada and that ground was cleaned by Dr. Ji. It was an old ruined place with stones and old grass and so much stuff there. Dr. Ji with a few balsams himself cleaned the ground. The Topanji writes about his own example that in, whilst they were studying, Guruji had visited them. So morning they had to go to some activities and evening they will go out around to meet people. He shared a room with one of his friends. And as Guruji was there, Guruji also slept there. Now because of being tired, and morning to run and rush out, 
the Topanji used to leave the bed. But when he came back in the afternoon, he sees his bed is done. This went on for two, three days. And then he thanks his partner who is there. And he says, thank you so much. You know, you're tidying up my bed. Sometimes I'm just too lazy or tired. And as there's so much running around. But the friend says, hang on. I haven't done anything. And now he's surprised and a bit worried. So he goes back and peeps through the window and he sees Guruji is making the bed. He felt so ashamed that Guruji was doing it. But there is no shame in doing menial work. Why should us as Karyakartas be ashamed of anyone? All work is God's work. Let us not be ashamed of anything. We have seen big temples and also in our home there is a temple. And there we light an agarbati. The agarbati is our example. It is mostly black in color. It is not a good sight to see. It sits on the side in a corner. And it is lit and burnt throughout its life. It burns continuously, but gives out sweet fragrance. It is very humble. Let us learn to be like the Agarbati. Today's leaders are of very many different kinds. But there is a certain group whom we can term as photogenic leaders. Isn't it so? Whenever a program is there, you will see that in 20 pictures, there is one leader who is there in all pictures. Is that really a sign of leadership? Should we be so much attached that all our pictures should be taken? We should be in all pictures? I agree. Pictures are important in today's digital world. The great work of RSS and the Swamsevaks who are doing in Bharat in this COVID-19 era, we will not have known if pictures are not taken. But whenever we take pictures or whenever pictures are taken, make sure the organization, the team is put forward. Then myself. There is a rule that I can say, and you can try this out. In any pictures, make sure none of your shoulders are visible. Or if so, only one. But in any picture, make sure both your shoulders are not visible. Think over this. I'm sure you'll get it. The whole earth has got 75% ocean or water but where is the ocean the ocean is at point zero what we known as sea level it is known as the zero level all over rivers start from high places and come down in great force or while trickling and join the ocean. The magnitude of the ocean is so much, but still it has chosen the position of zero. The rivers start from up and come down to the ocean, but the ocean never amplifies its show of strength. It is what is known as down to earth. The best example of being down to earth is Mahadev. He does not expect respect, but himself respects all. I'm sure all of us have visited a Shiv temple. And when you go in the Shiv temple, what do you see? There is not a single statue of Shiv. He is not there. 
And when you go closer, you will see that there is a shivling. And where is the shivling? It is below where you are standing. Mahadev says, I am below you. In all other places, whichever temple you got, all the murtis or idols or whatever is kept above our feet. But when you go to Mahadev's temple, the shivling is below. And that is why, because of his nature, because of the respect that he gives and the respect and not expecting any respect, he is known as Devoke Dev Mahadev. He is the Dev of all the Devs. His greatness is there because he is very much down to earth. Asuras go to him, Devas go to him, anyone goes to him. You take whichever kind of flower, he, acts, he takes it. You bow to him, no worries. You don't bow, no worries. You offer, no worries. You don't offer, no worries. That is the I think one of the best examples of being a noble leader. Let us as Karyakartas be unconscious about our greatness. Let no one ever know that we are great. Let no one ever know that we have a position. Let all feel that we are equal. We are their friends. For this the foundation stone is our ideal. Let us become like the foundation stone. And how is the foundation stone? It is rough. It has got no smooth edges. It is in fact under the tower, under the building. But the foundation stone holds the whole structure, holds everything together. If it moves even little, the whole tower can come down. Let us become like the foundation stone. Let us become faceless leaders. As Karyakartas, we should have no desire for fame. And <clears throat> The sung as we know today, the best example for it or how it has been set out is by Parampunya Bala Sahibji Devas. He was the third Sar Sang Chalak and he was the one who has more so set the structure of Sang. And he said that Sang is bigger than me. When Dr. Ji and Guruji were there, Sang was smaller. So Dr. Ji and Guruji are other me. But now the Sangh is bigger. So there should only be two pictures in all our functions. In functions of Sangh, of Swam Sevaks. Of course we can have pictures of Bharat, Mata, Shivaji. All those are not what he was talking about. But Swam Sevaks, we only keep two pictures of Dr. Ji and Guruji. No more pictures. Even he said, when I die, there should be no big function. There should be no structure or samadhi raised like we have of Dr. Ji and Guruji, but now no more. And he set a trend that we have only those two pictures. He had no desire for fame. Otherwise, Today, we will not be the Sangh that we are today. We would also be like so many other organizations having five, six different pictures in front of the board. Santukaram was a great Sangh, but he was so much into what he did. He was very much a divine soul. Shivaji Maharaj really wanted to praise him and calls him and say, sends a messenger that son to Karam, please come to my king kingdom 
but Tukaram says, I do not need to visit you. I do not want fame. If I come, you will honor me. But more so, if I come, what will happen? Only my champal will get hurt. So let me just stay where I am. He did not want any fame. There are so many such examples in the book. One is of the great Greek philosopher Diogenes. He was having a sunbath. If you can visualize how the Greeks had their sunbaths, they have a shop, they have a, they had a tub. They will sit in it for a few minutes or half an hour and then come out of it and soak themselves in sun. So he was having his sun bath and at that time in the palace, Alexander said, call the great Greek philosopher Diogenes. I would like to appreciate him. And when the messenger comes, Diogenes says, no, tell the king I am busy. And Alexander himself comes to the sun bath area and says, I have come to take you to the kingdom. And he says, he asks, why, O king? And Alexander says, I want to give you something. And Diogenes says, you want to give me something? And will you give me what I ask for? And Alexander says, of course, I am the king. And Diogenes says, all I need, O oh Alexander, is for you to move a little bit to your left because the way you are standing now, your shadow is falling on me and blocking my sunburn. Please move just a little bit aside. No desire of fame. Let us become workaholics. This workaholicness should be in, a, in us such that we don't have time for fame. The best example is a hard-working ant. If you have seen how an ant works, or if you have known about the ant, you will be amazed. The ant, if there is a river or some water, and the whole colony of ant wants to cross it, the ants, a few of them, will join and sacrifice their life, build a bridge, and cross. They will die so that others will cross over them. The ant doesn't stop working. It works throughout its life, gathers food and takes it down to its colony so that the young ones have food. The ant is a great example of someone who works hard. The bodhiks that we listen to or whatever knowledge that we acquire is important and plays an important role. But it is not the most important thing. Let us take an example of Duryodhan. One may know everything, but one may not do everything. Duryodhan says, I know what is Dharma. I know what is a Dharma. But still, I choose the path of a dharma. Why is it so? It is because of the influence he had from young. And that is of his mama, Mama Shakun. Because of a wrong influence, he chose the wrong path. Though one may have all the knowledge, but if we have wrong influence, we will be in the wrong path. An inspiring word when occurred can light a dry wood and bring fire. An inspiring life that is lived produces thousands of karyakartas. In one train journey, the Topanji writes, he was sitting next to a man who was reading a book and 
the book was on some philosophy and when the person went around to walk or something in the train the topanji picked the book and read and the book had got a lot of the philosophy just like the sang philosophy which the topanji found interesting but he read a sentence and he was shocked and the sentence said that example is not the thing that molds men the topanji read again not example is not the thing that molds men and he left the book he says no this is totally wrong but out of curiosity he reads again and the author goes ahead to say example is the only thing that molds men men do not learn anything by knowledge men only learn by example if you smoke or if you drink alcohol which at present the society considers are bad can you tell your children do not smoke or do not drink alcohol it's not possible if you sit on the sofa and play with your phone and you tell your children do not play with phone do you think they will obey no one has to set an example when a child is young it sees its parents and gets inspired from them to become like them let us become great examples for everyone to follow and for that we will have to become exceptionally good we have all heard of the ripple effect and what is the ripple effect in a lake of water when a stone is hit it creates small kind of ripples which go till the shore and as they come closer to the shore they die off like the sun is very hot but as the waves ripple straight to the earth the warmthness reduces how much warmth do we want to give to all the people around us and to give that much how much should we be hot the greater we are the greater ripple effect we will give it is up to us to make ourselves great leaders for us the example of param punya doctor ji is enough continuously we should read his life story to get inspired he was a great man a great friend he was loved by all and he loved all yadavrao ji joshi who visited our camp in 1987 here a great pracharak was very ill was on his deathbed and whenever he felt that these were his last moments he used to call people he used to call the people who served him the swayam sevaks and pracharaks please dress me up in the ganesh quickly they used to dress him up in the ganesh he couldn't talk they used to lift him and he used to tell take me out in front of the picture of dr ji and he stood there doing pranam and wished that i will die by looking at the picture of dr ji but that did not come so he went back and after a few days again he feels i'm going to die he says please get me up again get me dressed that was love in 1989 when dr ji's 100 years birth centenary celebrations were done throughout in bharat a drive was done to find all people who had met dr ji and to record whatever they had known or get his good examples or anything out of them very many old people were visited at that time one such incident suffices what could have happened 
when a team of karyakartas and swamsaks went to an old man and they said we have come from sang and it is the 100 year celebrations and we have come to know your views of dr ji the old person could not say anything he sat down with tears in his eyes and he cried throughout continuously for 15 20 minutes continuously crying not a single word and last he utters a word and says prem namaste was a good project by dijuji uh, we will go to learn more about the book karyakarta i hope to hear something more next week koi baat nahi uh shubhrati to everyone namaste <laughs>